am back this week ready to share these vibrant gorgeous recipes that I have been cooking up recently. I know that these recipes are going to carry you through spring and summer. They are incredible. As always these recipes are focused on giving you the most nourishing ideas possible with a focus on protein. In celebration of wild garlic being in season I am going to share this wild garlic omelette. I have no words. We're going to cook the wild garlic down with tomatoes and we're going to throw some pesto and cottage cheese in there. It is to die for. I've also got a really simple throw in one bowl baked blueberry oat recipe. For those of you who want a totally plant-based high protein breakfast option, I've got you covered as well. I'm gonna be sharing this tofu scramble. It is delicious. We're gonna spice it up right, we're gonna season it up right, we're gonna cook it well. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. More about that shortly. More recipes can be found over on my website at www.tishwonders.co.uk. I promise you are going to love these. Let me know which one catches your eye, which one you are running to the store to go and buy the ingredients for. Let's jump into the first recipe, let's go. Let me tell you about this wild garlic omelet. I am using wild garlic non-stop in my kitchen. It will probably only be around for a couple of more weeks, if that. I'm trying to make use of it whilst I can. So my regular everyday omelette gets transformed using this wild garlic. This is my ideal type of breakfast, which keeps me fueled, keeps me feeling satiated. So of course for our omelette, we're gonna need some good quality eggs. If you don't eat eggs, but you still wanna try this recipe out, so you're looking for an alternative, I guess chickpea flour may I've work. I've seen that that's kind of like a popular alternative for vegans. Pesto is completely optional for convenience and ease. I have a shop-bought pesto on hand at all times. So I feel like cottage cheese is having its moment. I am seeing it absolutely everywhere. I thought just to kind of like ramp up the protein in my omelet, I would add some cottage cheese combined with the pesto and wild garlic. It works so well. So for the start of the recipe, the wild garlic, like I said, I am just adding it in everything at the moment. Cannot get enough of this stuff. We're going to chop it up really finely. So it like releases all of the flavors, all of those delicious flavors. It's such a short stint that we have wild garlic available. So I am making the most of it. If you can't get hold of wild garlic, don't panic. You could use spinach in place and chop up a garlic clove. My recipes are always adaptable. Like I say, work with what you've got. I love chopping up some tomatoes and cooking them down and then throwing the wild garlic in. That's just my preference. If you don't have cherry tomatoes, red peppers would work as well. So for extra flavor and extra edge, we are going to chop up some spring onions and add them in also. To begin with, we're going to chop up all of the ingredients that requires chopping. So that includes the spring bring onions, just finely chop them, well as finely chopping the wild garlic. I feel like the more you break it down, the more the flavors will be released. We're also going to halve our cherry tomatoes and then we're gonna grab a pan. You can heat whatever fat you like to heat. I chose to use a bit of butter. But yeah, I began by throwing in my spring onions, just cooking them down for a minute, then throwing in my cherry tomatoes and seasoning everything well. So I added in some sea salt, some black pepper and some mixed herbs. So I cooked everything down in the pan pan for a couple of minutes before adding in the wild garlic. I like to add the wild garlic in last because I want to keep that green vibrant color. I don't want to cook it too much. So I threw the omelet filling into a bowl and just set it aside and then prepared the eggs. So I just cracked my eggs in a bowl, gave them a whisk, gave them a little bit of salt and placed the same pan back on the heat. On a low to medium heat, I threw in my whisked eggs and I gave it some black pepper because I had forgot to add some before to the eggs. So after a few minutes when I could clearly see that the egg was cooking, I threw my filling back in. Just look at that gorgeous filling. I then crumbled in the cottage cheese and I threw over some extra herbs just because I am extra. And I placed on top that pesto. I then went for it and I flipped the other half of my omelet and just folded everything. If you want, you can flip it over a couple of times just to make sure that everything is cooked properly or you could even put it in the oven for a few minutes. I grabbed my plate and served this absolutely stunning omelette up. It was just everything. Believe me, look at this omelette. I topped it with some fresh herbs and some chopped spring onions. The combination of the wild garlic, those oozy cherry tomatoes, that cottage cheese and pesto is unmatched. This wild garlic omelette is a satiating high protein breakfast idea. I always see wild garlic as an introduction of what's to come over the next few months. Although I don't wish time ahead, I cannot wait for summer produce. I am so ready for it. This recipe can be enjoyed any day of the week, but I have to say I love it on like a slow Saturday Day or Sunday morning. Oh, just the best. I thoroughly enjoyed this omelette. It was gone. Look at me chopping it up. It was mm, amazing. 
As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. One of my goals this year is to figure out a sustainable time management practice, which enables me to balance my work and personal life. Over the years, Skillshare has been a major online tool that has equipped me with the knowledge and has allowed me to strengthen certain areas of my business. Skillshare is mostly known for the classes they offer in areas like photography and video editing, but they also have so many incredible, life-changing, career-focused classes. I've been taking some incredible classes including productivity and time management as well as diversify your income whether you are a beginner or experienced content creator video editor or photographer Skillshare has a range of classes to help you take your business to the next level the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare if this sounds of interest to you hit the link and go check it out if you want to switch things up a little bit with your regular porridge oats in the morning this is a great alternative this is my baked blueberry oat recipe i am crazy for blueberries i love them if you want to you could switch out the blueberries for apples you could obviously use any other type of berry raspberry strawberries blackberries any berry would work well for this so we're going to be needing some oats so i would highly recommend you soak your oats the night before i've tried this recipe with non-soaked oats the soaked oats work so much better they're obviously soaked so they're easier to digest so it's just all round a win to so cute. We're going to be adding in some blueberries. I think blueberries work really well because when they kind of get warm, they almost like burst and they're just delicious. I'm going through a complete berry craze phase at the moment. I just cannot get enough of them. I'm using some Greek yogurt in this recipe. Of course, you could make that easy swap and just use something like coconut yogurt or a dairy-free alternative. I've never really been into protein powders. I find that a lot of them have this like really unnatural artificial taste that my palate just cannot handle. But I recently tried this protein powder. It's a completely vegan protein powder. It's brown rice, pea and pumpkin seed, I believe. I'll link the exact protein powder that I use in the description box for you. So to bring the best out of this baked blueberry oat, recipe we're going to be needing a touch of vanilla essence some cinnamon and i'm also going to use a sweetener so i'm going to use some maple syrup you could use honey you could use whatever works for you so to begin i grabbed my soaked oats i just drained the water and i placed them into a large mixing bowl i then added the greek yogurt the vanilla essence good amount of cinnamon powder you could also add nutmeg to this as well it would be really tasty i placed in the egg i gave it a pinch of salt some maple syrup and some protein powder before mixing everything well if you want to leave the egg out, that's completely fine. I am just at a point in my life <laughs> where I need a high protein breakfast that keeps me going, but it's completely optional. You know, work with what you're doing, work with where you're at, work with what you eat, work with what you enjoy. And then to finish, I threw in the blueberries, just combining everything before pouring the oat mixture into these little ramekins that I could find. You could put it in just like one large kind of oven proof dish, but I chose to split mine up even though I ate both. So <laughs> I placed the oats into my little ramekins topped with some more blueberries and cinnamon and whack them in a preheated oven of 180 degrees. I cooked the baked blueberry oats for 30 minutes and then I removed them. Just look at those blueberries bubbling. The blueberries will be a sight. They will be exploding inside. I topped my baked blueberry oats with some more yogurt, and fresh blueberries, some walnuts and gave it an extra drizzle of maple syrup. That's because I actually didn't put much maple syrup inside. You know, go with what you want, go with how sweet you want it. When you break into it and you get a burst of that warm blueberry that has just almost melted. Oh my God, it is just the best thing ever. This is one breakfast that will definitely be on repeat and I can't wait to try it with apples. This is my tofu scramble, which is so good. This is coming from someone who does not eat tofu often. I have found a way just to make it really, really tasty. We're gonna season the tofu, cook down some mushrooms and tomatoes, finish with some coriander, throw loads of spices in there. It's gonna be delicious. For this tofu scramble, I'm using some firm tofu. This tofu in particular doesn't require pressing, which is just a lot easier and I guess just a lot more convenient. So when it comes to choosing the vegetables that you want in your tofu scramble, of course, go with the vegetables that you enjoy. I thought that mushrooms, tomatoes, and red onions would go really, really well in this scrambled tofu. And I wasn't disappointed when I tried it out. I personally didn't add greens, but I love starting my day with some sort of green. So adding spinach, kale, watercress, just any green that you love would be fantastic for this recipe. So like I mentioned, I also chose to add in some tomatoes. These are just gonna get cooked down with lots of spices. So they're gonna be really, really delicious. Added in some red onion as well. Just to finish everything off, I personally love coriander. I know it's not a hub for everybody. So if you don't love 
coriander you could definitely sub you could add some chives you could add some parsley the spices for this tofu scramble is what really makes it so we're going to add some turmeric i would say this is mainly for the color not really for the taste for the taste we're going to add in some jerk seasoning believe me i tried it out and it is incredible i have this dry jerk spice blend but you could definitely add in a little bit of jerk paste we're also going to be adding in some garlic powder my tofu personally doesn't require pressing if yours does then you know what to do i still kind of just you know patted it down with some paper towel i grabbed my bowl and i just crumbled the tofu in so i placed in some salt and some pepper followed on by all of the spices so the turmeric some garlic powder and that jerk seasoning i also splashed in some tamari trust me it works really well if you've got soy sauce you could also use that and i also drizzled in some olive oil I combined everything making sure that all of the tofu was seasoned and covered and coated well i then set the bowl aside and continued with chopping up the vegetables so starting with the mushrooms I just kind of sliced my mushrooms then finely diced them. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just roughly chop them. I then continued by finely, as finely as possible, chopping up the red onion and then followed on by chopping up the tomatoes. I personally prefer to remove the seeds from the tomato for this recipe. And then I just diced the tomato up. So I grabbed my pan and I heated some olive oil on a low to medium heat. You could use coconut oil if you'd prefer. I placed in those chopped mushrooms to begin with. I gave the mushrooms some salt, some garlic powder, some black pepper and some mixed herbs. So we're gonna cook the mushrooms down. You're gonna see that they're gonna release some liquid, but just continue cooking them and then we're going to throw in our red onions just continue to cook everything mix everything followed on by throwing in those diced tomatoes we're going to set the vegetables aside and then we're going to grab the pan and we're going to cook the tofu but we're going to cook it separately i personally prefer my tofu to get like this golden color with the tofu being set aside it would have had the chance just to kind of get a little bit of flavor you know from all of the seasoning that we added i then threw the cooked vegetables back in just combining everything now, at this point i know some people like to add vegan milk or tahini or vegan cream or something like that i personally love the consistency like this so lastly to top this tofu off i chopped up some coriander finely chopped up some coriander believe me the coriander is like that finishing touch i just oh i just love it this was so delicious the main vegetable that actually really works well a tofu scramble are the mushrooms especially if you season the mushrooms up well the combination of the tofu with the mushrooms mwah, beautiful so there was only one thing left to do and that was to serve this tofu scramble up so you can serve it up any way that you want i toasted some bread and placed the tofu scramble on top of the bread i served it with some watercress and some avocado For somebody who adores scrambled eggs and would never think that tofu could come close in terms of enjoyment this tofu scramble this is a competitor for my standard scrambled eggs i think with all of the seasoning all of the extra vegetables that i added you know just made it like a real full body tofu scramble it works really really well my final protein packed breakfast idea you've got three ideas to take into your week let me know which one you'll be trying out in your kitchen check out my ebooks over on my website i will see you very very soon bye